Hi, so in the previous video we looked at real business cycle models, the assumptions they make, and then we looked at the household problem and the firm's problem that they are maximizing. So in this video we're going to use the results from the previous one, so if you haven't seen that, make sure to look at that, but this should hopefully still make some, some sense even without that video. So we have a household that is maximizing the expected discounted lifetime utility with respect to the budget constraint. So they are maximizing this objective function, which is their expected lifetime utility. Um, and this is discounted at the discount factor beta, and it's an infinite sum. But here we have a Lagrangian. So we are maximizing with respect to our constraint, which is the budget constraint that we derived in the last video, and we have the Lagrange multiplier lambda t. So we maximize this infinite sum, and it's an infinite sum of utilities, and it's an infinite sum of constraints, because we have the budget constraint in each period. As you can see, these are both denoted by period t, all the subscripts except for capital, because we look at capital in the next period, because we have time to build capital, we invest in period t and we get our capital in period t plus one so i can expand all of this out and write out the lagrangian not as an infinite sum anymore but as an infinite number of terms all added together and i've done this just to add a bit of intuition as to what happens we discussed this in the previous video but again just to add to this with with the constraints in in there so we have utility in period zero as our first term and this doesn't have the expectations operator on it because we know what our period zero consumption is because we know what the productivity parameter in period zero is and we also know what our budget constraint is uh, so again there's no expectations operator on period zero stuff but as we move on to period one we then are f1 discounting at the discount factor because future utility we discount at discount factor beta. And we are taking expectations because these, these values of consumption and labor choice are all conditional on things that are beyond our control. So as we said, the productivity shock uh, to our parameter zt, that, that could change how much income we have in the future. For example, if we have a positive productivity shock, this could increase our wages. And so all we can do is maximize the expected utility we gain from future periods because we have some shock or potential for a shock that we, we don't know for sure what it's going to be. So we have to take our expectations at period zero. And we're using all the information we have in period zero, but we, we can't predict the future. So it's only, that's the best we can do. And then we have period two which is now discounted by the square of the discount factor. So we have beta squared, and then all these terms um, in, in terms of period two, so subscripted with a two. And then I have got a load of terms added together that we've skipped out because we'd, we'd have to go on for infinity. So to simplify things a bit, we've then generalized to period t, what this would look like. And so we're discounting by beta to the power of t, and then we have all these variables in period t. But we don't just stop at period t because we have an infinite sum, so we can then also have period t plus one. And again, I've put at the end of this a plus dot 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 to show that we can go on to period t plus any number. We can go to infinity because it's an infinite sum of utilities into the future. Of course, these are discounted by a declining amount, so our utility in period infinity which doesn't exist, but just for for argument's sake, there that's going to marginally increase our utility by zero because we're discounting it by by this factor, which will give it pretty much zero. So, okay, what we're going to do to solve this Lagrangian problem is consider that we're in some arbitrary period t, and then just take first order conditions. So, I wrote down the period t uh, problem, but we are but we're at period t, so it's as if we're starting in period t and we're taking the first order conditions within, within period t. So just a simple first order conditions of this, this stuff that we see here. 
this period t budget constraint and everything so we take first order conditions with respect to our choice variables which is consumption our labor and we can also choose our capital in period t plus one we choose this indirectly through investment but it's still a choice variable nonetheless we, we can choose this variable indirectly so we take our first order conditions our first order condition with respect to consumption will give us this equation and I've just rearranged it such that we have the expected value of the Lagrange multiplier is equal to this expected value of the derivative of utility with respect to consumption we do another first order condition with respect to labor and we get out this result and we do another one with respect to our capital stock in period t plus one so I, I won't go through all the, all the workings with that it's just we we do derivatives of our Lagrangian in period t and so now we're going to take these results that we've got here and we're going to assume that we're actually in this period t as we said so this means that for example here we we have the expectations operator in period zero because that, that's what our Lagrangian was initially in terms of but now we're assuming we're in period t so we don't just have information from period zero we still have all this information we had in period zero but we now also have information from period one period two all these periods up to period t we we have we know what happened to productivity we know what we consumed in all these periods so we we know thing we know a few more things than we did before and so we are actually taking the expectations operator at period t and taking the expectations operator at period t of things that are occurring in period t well we know everything that's occurring in period t because as we just said we are in period t so this means that we know the actual value of these we don't need to take expectations of things that occur in period t we just need to we, we know what they are so we just use the actual value of them and if we're in period t plus one we are now using period t information for these variables but we don't know their exact value because we're not in period t plus one yet we could still have some shocks in the next period that that are completely random and we we aren't sure what they're going to be so we still have expectations of things that are beyond period t so that's what these two things say and so we can kind of change what our first order conditions are because we have a bit more information and if we if we do that we can get to these equations and with rational expectations maximizing our lifetime utility at period zero is equivalent to maximizing just each period's utility individually and that's making a quite a strong assumption but that that's the simplifying assumption we're going to make and our first order conditions from before by changing our expectations operators in this way they look a lot nicer now because we don't have we don't have say for example this e naught lambda t because this lambda or this Lagrange multiplier in period t we we now know what it is because we are in period t we have enough information to say that this is equal to some value lambda t and so we get these nice conditions and however we still have a bit of uncertainty about our third first order condition here and that's because we had we have this depending on t plus one so all we can do is decide or we can take a best guess um, about what these values are going to be and this comes directly from these first order conditions but as you can see in this third first order condition when we were taking derivatives with respect to kt plus one is that we have lambda t plus one r or the rental rate of capital in t plus one and so we can't say what these values are going to be because they depend on shocks to productivity in the future so we get out these three equations and we we have solved lagrangians before where we've got first order conditions out and what do we do with them well we tend to substitute in them into each other for our lagrange multipliers so 
we have a lambda t here, a lambda t here, and a lambda t here. So we can we can substitute these equations into each other to start to get out some interesting optimality conditions. So we're going to start by substituting in one and three. Take a good look. So I'm going to scroll down the screen at what equations one and three look like. And I've got these already in terms of lambda. So it's very, very simple. What we do is we just set these two things equal to each other. Or so we get out this equation, which as I've written in green, this is the Euler equation, um, which is very nice. So what does this Euler equation say? It says that if households save one unit of extra consumption in period T at the expected interest rate, which is given by this, then the reduction in utility in period T is exactly offset by our increase in expected discounted utility in period T plus one. So it's our normal Euler equation, or more accurately, our normal stochastic Euler equation. And so this is the Euler equation for our consumption and our saving choices for across the two periods. So we have our utility in period T and our utility or our expected utility in period T plus one, which is on the right hand side. And we're saying that at optimum, if households save one extra unit in period T, which will be the change in our utility in period T, that we're, we're saving some extra utility, then the reduction in utility is exactly offset by this change in utility, which is coming at the expected interest rate. And so we get if we save in period T, we're going to get some benefit in period T plus one, but we know that this is an expectation. So it's it's not certain, but the in period T, the best we can do, if we, we are maximizing our expected utility in the future, so at optimum, we are going to weigh, weigh up the marginal benefits and marginal costs of our expected values of utility, and this is what our Euler equation says. So, We've done that one, and now we're going to substitute in to each other our equations one and equation two, and we get out this condition, which, so we have now a labor and a consumption trade-off. So we're no longer looking at an intertemporal condition, which is the Euler equation. We're now looking at an intratemporal condition. And we can rearrange this to get this equation, which is our intratemporal condition. So these are all in period T. They're not across time periods. We are looking at a static equation here. And our left hand side here is giving our disutility from working more. Let's make this a bit clearer that on the bottom we have a derivative with respect to consumption. And so on our left hand side, we are losing some utility by working more because we don't like, we don't like working because it means that we have less leisure time. So we lose some utility there, but at optimum, this is equally offset by the gain we get from working more, the marginal benefit of that. And very simply, our, our marginal benefit of working more is going to be our wage rate. If we increase our the amount we work by one hour, we're going to earn wage W, which we can spend on consumption. And our marginal benefit of consumption is on the bottom of this equation. So our marginal benefit of working is going to equal our marginal disutility from working at optimum. And this this just comes from, we've talked about this before, that at optimum we need to be, our marginal benefits and costs need to be equal. Otherwise we could change our work choices or our consumption choices such that we increase our expected or our actual utility. And you'll notice that there are no expectations in this equation because it's all in period T. So this is not expect expected values anymore because we know all these values. So this intratemporal condition is all, all well known. However, in our Euler equation, we were looking at expectations. So we, by changing our consumption 
patterns, we could change our expected utility and what the Euler equation says if we maximize our expected utility from our consumption choices. And this condition says we maximize our actual utility from our labor choices. So that will just about wrap up this video. In the next one, we're going to write down a specific utility function and actually solve for some equilibrium conditions and look at what this what the real business cycle model says once we make some further assumptions on what our utility function looks like. So make sure to check out the playlist for that video, leave a like if this video was at all useful and subscribe for future videos.